Mijn naam is Hans van Boer, ik ben hoofdredacteur van Database Magazine en deze keer is de gast op BI Platform Mr. Donald Farmer. Hij is program manager van het Microsoft BI team. Welcome Donald. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, the first question will be I was expecting a SQL Server 2010 for next year, but <laughs> I've heard something about 2008 release 2. Can Definitely. you explain? That to us. Yes, well, we, uh, 2008 release 2 will come out in 2010, but we're not calling it SQL Server 2010 because internally we just think of it as a refresh of capabilities. So the relational engine, for example, gets a couple of features, but not very many. It gets um, some improved scalability as a result of 64 compression. processor support. Mm -hmm. We have some improved compression for SAP in particular, mm -hmm. actually. Um, but really, it's not a core release for relational engine. For business intelligence, it's a different story. There are some very, very important features. Um, so we call it 2008 R2, so we don't give people the impression that there's more coming in the relational engine than they might expect. Well, let's get to the BI aspects then of, right. the, of R2. Well, BI, it's, it's, it's very important in R2. It's one of the reasons we're doing the release. Uh -huh. um, so we have um, improved reporting. We have mm -hmm. a, a great new report builder, um, which includes ability to work with maps and an idea of what we call grab and go reporting, which is mm -hmm. it's really a way of building reports into components. You can take a chart, you can save the chart without having to save the entire report, and then other people can use that chart. They can mm -hmm. take the chart that you've built and use it in their reports. So it's kind of componentizing reports. Um, and then on the analysis services side, we have um, a completely new product that we call Power Pivot which comes in two flavors, PowerPivot for Excel, which is the client, and PowerPivot for SharePoint, which is the server-side application. Mm -hmm. And PowerPivot is, I guess that's the one which is getting a lot of news in R2, because it's it's a completely new application and it's uh, kind of radically different from anything that uh, people have done before. Mm -hmm. It essentially allows business users to slice and dice enormous volumes of data if, if they have access to it in, in Excel. So you can handle on a desktop machine 100 million rows, 200 million rows of data in Excel. You can publish it to a server where other people can then interact with it as if you just published a BI application. So it gives power to the business user, but it also, on the server side, gives IT insight and oversight to what those business mm -hmm. users are doing. So we try and kind of bridge a gap between the business world and the IT world. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the major features of, okay. of R2. And there are some other things coming as well. Master Data Services, another new application for doing master data management. Stream Insight, which is an application for doing um, what we call complex event processing. Mm -hmm. So that's data as it streams in from, say, a production system, yeah. manufacturing system, something like that, or even maybe from a web log. And we can analyze it as the data streams and take actions based on changes in the data stream. Mm -hmm. So that, that's also there. So all this will be in SQL Server 2000 Data R2. It's a big release, but it's not quite as big as 20, uh, you know, as we would call it 2010. Uh, in your presentation, uh, Donald, you mentioned the self-service business intelligence right. uh, as the philosophy of Microsoft, bring BI to the business. Uh, a power pivot uh, seems to be a very mature BI front end. Well, I think it's a, it's a first version, but we've got a lot in it, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, self-service, it's interesting. When we talk about self-service, we talk about business users being able to build an analytics that previously they would need to go to IT for. Now, the idea here isn't to cut IT out of the equation. It's rather to say that there's a lot of things that business users do that um, it's easier for IT to give them the infrastructure and let mm -hmm. them do it themselves than it is for IT to answer every question. So rather than IT having to understand every calculation and every um, view that the business user wants to build, IT can give them an infrastructure and data and the tools to build it themselves. So this is why we call it self-service. And Power Pivot is the application that makes that possible. Mm. It's an add-in to Excel. And the reason we do it that way is because everybody knows Excel. Mm -hmm. There's, what, 400 million Excel <laughs> users? So that's yeah. a big installed base of people who are already skilled and efficient with the product. Yeah. So by adding a product into Excel and making it Excel-like in the experience, we think we can reach a much bigger market mm. than if we had to um, 
educate them. Yeah, in, yes, you know, yes, sure. Why did it took you so long? Because everybody knows uh, uh, Excel was the most used BI tool in the world, and all your competitors were trying to get people away from Excel. Mm. But now you come with your with the new add-in, and but right. why did it take t take why, so long? Why it takes so long? Yeah. Well, it takes the convergence of of a number of things to come together. Uh, one thing is that um, desktop technology, in terms of hardware, has really mm. advanced a lot. Um, we use an in-memory um, compression engine, so it's an in-memory column store of data. Column store. Yeah. Column store, yeah. Mm. And that, that allows us to get huge volumes of data into memory. But um, memory is cheap now, and um, machines are capable of having a lot of memory. I mean, even my little netbook can have two gigabytes. My ordinary laptop has four gigabytes. My desktop has 8 to 16 gigabytes. Mm -hmm. So you can, uh, on your desktop machines now, you have capacity for doing that. It's not so very long ago that you know desktop machines only had 512 or 1 gigabyte oh, yeah, of memory. Sure. So yeah. a few versions ago, we wouldn't have been able to do mm -hmm. anything like the same kind of um, work that we can do now. But now it becomes practical mm -hmm. to work with you know, the kind of data that businesses yeah. need. So that convergence has happened. And then also our understanding of the BI market just moves mm. on. And you know we've seen people working in Excel. And one of the interesting things is you're absolutely right. People have built tools all around, you know, the world yeah. and different yeah. um, locales for different verticals, trying to you know build BI tools that are better than Excel. Mm. Users, the, do you know the number one feature of every BI tool I've ever seen? Export yeah, to Excel. Yeah, export. <laughs> it's what everybody does yes. when they yeah. reach the end of what their Go application to. can do. Expert. The export to Excel. Yeah. It sounds like uh, you've been looking to products like ClickView very well. ClickView is very interesting, isn't it? Yeah, and it does something similar in the sense that it's got an in-memory column store. A yeah. lot of self-service applications mm. do. I think the thing I admire most about ClickView isn't so much the technology as the marketing. These guys are great. Mm -hmm. They do a fantastic job of getting out there and, and, and selling the product that's really good. The technology, well, the thing about the technology for us is that it's, it's not Excel, so people have to go out and learn a new product. And we don't feel it has that IT side. And this is something that's very important for us, mm -hmm. bringing not just a power user tool, but also an IT environment where IT can manage and control what's going on. We hear a lot from IT departments that they're nervous about self-service mm -hmm. because they, they feel they're giving too much power to end users. So it's been very important for us to say that there's power pivot for Excel and power pivot for SharePoint. And SharePoint is this manageable environment. Mm -hmm. We say it gives IT insight and oversight. Mm -hmm. They can see what the users are doing and they can manage that process. And the users can share uh, yeah. the files. They so, share the files, yeah. they share the applications, yes. in fact. I mean, it's, uh, it's really like sharing a little BI application. Mm. And the important thing there is IT manage that, as if they're managing an application. Mm. So with, with this environment, we think that um, both business users and IT get something that they're looking for, mm. which is one, and one of the reasons we actually, we don't always talk about self-service BI, we actually talk about managed self-service BI. Mm -hmm. And that managed part is very important. Yes. You know. Uh, Donald, the third new uh, BI delivery by Microsoft is Parallel Warehouse. I, right. su I suppose that's kind of an appliance based on the Data Allegro technology? This is the Data Allegro technology that we acquired. Huh? And what we've done over the last three years that we, 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 we bought, since we bought this, is we built it out into uh, obviously a Microsoft uh, technology. Mm -hmm. And um, it is a massively parallel data warehouse for SQL Server. So today, SQL Server scales very well up to, say, 32 terabytes. We've got some really good instances running there. But um, with uh, Parallel Warehouse, you'll be able to scale to hundreds of terabytes, really to the highest end data warehouse requirements. And what we've done is taken the technology that Data Allegro had, which was the ability to scale out queries, for example, yes. in storage mm -hmm. across you know, blade servers, across commodity hardware. And um, we've applied that to our environment. And so we work with hardware partners. And the hardware partners provide the commodity hardware and um, the configurations. And we provide this um, massively scalable mm -hmm. architecture. Would you call it an, a data warehouse appliance? It's appliance-like. It's, it's not an appliance in the sense that we don't sell the hardware. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, it's a different hardware vendor from, a, um, from the software vendor. But nevertheless, when you go to our hardware partners and you say, I'd like a a parallel data warehouse for Microsoft, you get something which is effectively an appliance. Oh, yeah. um, that goes back to one of the reasons why we looked at Data Allegro originally, because Data Allegro didn't build their own hardware, they, they, they assembled. The software. The software. Um, yeah, mm. they, they wrote the software and they assembled um, ready-built hardware. Mm -hmm. And um, that's a great architecture for us. You know, we, we're, we're not in the hardware business. You know, 
apart yeah. from mice and keyboards and <laughs> the Xbox, but that's not, yeah. quite the, not quite the same market. No, no, no. Well, final question, uh, Donald. What more can we expect in short term from Microsoft? Well, look at the technologies we have just now, the in-memory technology from, mm. from, from PowerPivot, the integration with SharePoint, the relational engine scaling ever more, and also our cloud services technology, and expect to see more and more investment in those areas oh. and uh, pulling the whole thing together. It's going to be very exciting. Thanks very much for being our guest. Thank you very Thank you. much indeed. It's been a great conference.